Hi, I'm Patricia Grabarek. And I'm Katina Sawyer, and welcome to the Worker Being Podcast. So today, Katina is going to be telling us about an article. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Sneak preview? Yes, I do. Um, So the article is about the impact of coaching on people's well-being, and specifically people who have jobs that are particularly likely to experience burnout. So they looked at physicians. So I thought it was kind of relevant for this time period since a lot of physicians are working really hard, uh, but also there are a lot of jobs that, you know, are prone to burnout. So um, we're going to learn whether or not having a coach is useful to you or not. Ooh, that sounds fun. I yes. am hoping that having a coach is useful, but you'll yes. let me know. You'll you let us know. See. <laughs> Secrets and surprises. <laughs> yes. Yes. So how are you doing today? I right am here? good. Um, I am good. I am just, uh, you know, finishing up the final things with our move, trying to get everything unpacked. And, um, you know, there's not much else that needs to happen at this point, which is positive. We're almost there. Um, so, yeah, everything's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with um, the progress we're making. So, yeah, can't complain feeling a lot less chaotic than maybe the last couple of times we talked. Oh, good. Good, good. I'm glad. Glad to hear it. Um, I probably should preface, but just like we've done in the past few episodes, that we are recording this in advance because our lovely producer, Allie, is out on maternity leave. So we are actually recording this in May, and I believe this is launching in August. So past us is doing pretty well. (laughs) Are doing pretty well. (laughs) Past us is good, and hopefully future us is also good yes that would be bad if future us is bad yeah (laughs) yeah hopefully we're doing well too i hope everyone's doing well and hopefully everyone's healthy and safe and august is a more fun social time than may yes that's true yeah Uh, only time will tell it's such a weird time period to be like doing episodes that are going to air in the future because like more now than ever, the future is so uncertain. And I feel like people are probably listening to that and being like, it's, you know, I'll tell you what, this is what the future holds for you. But. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But you like, can't we're, tell us. I know. It's like, we're talking, um, like before we started recording, we were talking about things starting to slowly open up. Um, and all of you listening know what happened after did it yeah. work? Was it okay? Should we be scared and never leave our house? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. We have no idea. It's just like we're in that slow opening phase and I just, I don't know. It makes me nervous, but maybe I should be nervous or maybe I shouldn't be. And you listeners all know the answer. Ah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Um, well, what's going on with you? Yeah, I know that your anniversary was just this week. Yes. So we celebrated our first wedding anniversary in quarantine. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were creative, though, I think, in terms of our celebration. Like, we, um, I mean, everything in LA was closed, like in terms of beaches and obviously restaurants. You could only do takeout. So we drove down the coast and we ended up taking, um, getting lunch at one of our favorite places in Santa Monica. And we, Went to the top of a parking garage and ate our lunch while looking at the ocean from a parking garage because you couldn't get to the beach. You can't park next to it or anything. Um, and then for dinner, we actually ended up doing a – we took takeout from a fancy steakhouse and we got all dressed up. Like literally Danny was wearing like a suit jacket and everything. <laughs> and to go pick up our deliver or takeout food. Oh, um, he picked it up in a suit? Yeah, we picked it up, all dressed up. Oh, that's so cute. (laughs) Um, We went together, and we thought we'd be able to get out of the car, maybe, and, like, take a picture in front of it with, like, masks on, all dressed up. But they didn't even let us get out of the car. (laughs) Like, we, they just had us turn around and, like, come up with our window, and they, like, gave us the food through the window. And so we, Danny has, like, a picture of me, like, getting our fancy takeout, all dressed up in the car. (laughs) That is um, awesome. Yeah, so it was probably pretty funny for people to see like random people driving around all dressed up and fancy. Um, I love it. Yeah, but so we did that, and then in the evening we went back out to the coast to see some bioluminescence. There was uh, there's like a red algae bloom right now 
and apparently that can cause some bioluminescence so we got to see some mm-hmm. sparkly ocean water sparkly cool. ocean water and you had sparkly ocean water on your um like i mean not sparkly from algae but on your wedding day you at least True. got to see some sparkly ocean water so you know you so you sort of got it replicated yeah we at least had an ocean view and some beach sort of beach time um it was not the same as being in hawaii like we were supposed to be but i think i think we did a decent job being creative with our with our day i mean it felt given that we've been in quarantine for like i don't even know what it is almost like two months now yeah ish um that it feel it felt like we did a lot like just driving like we drove around on along the beach for like an hour and that felt like a big thing like we took like the long way home from play like from when we had lunch and Danny and I were just talking about how funny it is that like normally you'd be like oh no it's faster if you take the freeway you just go that way and we're like no let's take the long way yeah (laughs) there's not a destination to really get to in the same way yeah so it was good it was fun well I am glad that is exciting yeah yeah we did the best that we could but I think uh, that that is lovely and it sounds like you did a good job of coming up with creative ideas for celebrating which is always fun and enjoyable yeah and I think it'll definitely be memorable like it's gonna be hard to forget our first anniversary that was in a quarantine situation yeah so uh (laughs) that that will be remembered and we have funny pictures with face masks on so there you go there you go. Yeah. I mean, one day future generations will ask you how you spent your anniversary and you can tell them this tale and they'll be like, wow. And then like if they can't get like reservations at their favorite restaurant or something, you can be like, you know what? It could be a lot worse. You could be eating in a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. You could be in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But anyways. Awesome. Tell me about coaching. Tell me all okay. the things I should know. Sure. Okay. So this article is actually very simple and straightforward. Um, But I do think that the um, outcomes are important because I know for me, I've thought before about like, um, you know, the importance of having a coach or like having someone to sort of talk to about your career path. And, um, you know, you can be a person who has training in an area that is similar to what a coach would do like you and I have, but it doesn't mean that you don't uh, necessarily get curious about or think that you might benefit from being able to bounce your ideas off of or get some professional development from someone else, right? Like other people can see a lot more clearly um, or guide you or direct you a lot more clearly potentially than you can see yourself. So Mm -hmm. I was personally interested in learning more about, but I I don't actually know a whole lot about the field of coaching um, and how uh, folks have documented the results of coaching. And I guess Uh, from what this article says, um, there have been a lot of like independent case studies that have been done of coaches own practices. Uh, So like a particular coaching firm might do their own, um, their own study. Um, But there are not tons of studies on the impact of coaching in general. Um, And so uh, they basically wanted to take a look at what is the impact of coaching specifically on well-being? Um, so not only does it help add to our understanding of what coaching is, but also on well-being. So the article is called Coaching for Primary Care Physician Well-Being, a Randomized Trial and Follow-Up Analysis. And it's by McGonagall, Schwab, Yahanda, Dusky, Gertz, Pryor, Roy, and Kriegel. And uh, it was published in 2020 in the Journal of Occupational Health Psychology. Um so, and I know that the title has to do with primary care, physician well-being, but I think that this is broadly applicable to um, any job where there's burnout involved. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, by the way, this is just a random side thing, but I saw in our tracker where you put McGonagall and I was like, oh my God, Harry Potter. <laughs> the author's <laughs> name? Yes. <laughs> Professor McGonagall. Yeah, wrote I this mean, article it is about though. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely Professor McGonagall. Well, it is. I mean, I think that this person is a professor. I'm not sure. Um, she's in the Department of Psychological Sciences at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. So she probably gets um, that all the time and hates it so much. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that could be true. Um, Professor McGonagall says um, that <laughs> Harry Potter should get a coach. Um, no. Um, so, so basically what they talk about. So first, I think it's important to, talk, to just like define what are we counting as coaching. Mm-hmm. So coaching is a one-on-one meeting between a coach and a coachee that follows some kind of systematic, uh, programmatic um, approach that is collaborative, future focused and goal focused. So it's not just the coach kind of like giving you information and you're listening. Um, it has to be a collaborative effort. And it also is focused on things that are to come um, and setting goals. Um, and uh, it's for the purpose of professional or personal development. Um, so I think that's fairly straightforward, but I just wanted to make sure that people knew what we were talking about. So other kinds of like interventions, like let's say like counseling or therapy, um, while those are similar in that they're one-on-one, they're not focused on future uh, future goals or how the future might play out. Um, and uh, coaching is more focused on behavior rather than what's causing behavior. So it's more like... Um, thinking about how do you get yourself to enact the behaviors that you need to do in order to get the future that you want, as opposed to trying to understand the behaviors that you're currently doing and what's driving them. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It's all about focusing on the future and it seems like there has to be some sort of structure to it as well. Yes, exactly. Um, And coaches are different than mentors because mentors provide advice and guidance, but coaches actually are there to sort of listen to coaches and ask questions to help bring them to a place of greater awareness of what it is that they actually want and what they might need to do to get there. But it's much less um, advice giving and much more like guided discovery um, compared to a mentoring relationship. So it's not like I'm going to sit and give you advice for an hour. It's as a mentor might do. It's more I'm going to help prompt you to think about things a little bit differently so you can come up with a solution that seems feasible for for moving yourself forward that makes sense so I'm, I'm just thinking about like examples like when you are on the job and maybe you're you have a really good relationship with your leader um, they're more likely to be kind of in a mentoring capacity because I'm just thinking about my personal relationships with the leaders I've had you know you're asking questions to get advice and feedback and they're providing that kind of st- context sometimes it could be coaches too but I think people are more likely to mentor just like in a natural state Mm -hmm. versus coaching and maybe that's totally wrong but I just think that people are generally people that are not trained are more in the mentoring space yeah yes and that is accurate so you can find a mentor um anywhere uh you know we've talked about mentoring before that's more of a person that you locate that you think has some value in terms of giving you guidance for your career a coach is someone who's certified to follow a process to allow you to uncover insights kind of on your own, but in a facilitated way about what you actually want and how to get there. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. And so is a coach generally external to your organization or not necessarily? Yes. Usually a coach would be external to your organization. And in this study, that was the case. Um, So uh, they talk a little bit about this in the article, but in this study, they actually, the study provided the coaches for these physicians. Mm -hmm. Um, There are some of the results that may be driven by the fact that the company it's, or the hospital itself wasn't providing the coach. So they talk a little bit about that. Um, The value potentially of providing the coach as opposed to just encouraging someone to go get a coach on their own. Um, Mm -hmm. But yes, it would not be someone who's in your organization. Okay, that makes sense. So tell us, what what do they find about coaches? Okay, so generally, coaching has been demonstrated to have positive effects on things like performance and skills, on um, some work attitudes and things like that. Um, So we know a little bit about coaching um, in terms of its effectiveness, but we don't know a lot about coaching and well-being. Um, So they were specifically interested in how does coaching impact um, individuals' uh, well-being? And a lot of the studies, there ha- there have been some studies that have been done in the well-being space that they mentioned, but they haven't been very rigorous. So they really wanted to demonstrate the potential positive impact of coaching in a more rigorous way and with a specific focus on well-being. So um, 
What they were interested in mostly was burnout, um, psychological capital, which we have talked about before, um, a variety of job attitudes, like uh, job satisfaction, um, efficacy in your job, um, engagement in your job, um, and turnover intentions. So they were interested in a bunch of things specific to the job, as well as things that were specific to um, your general feelings or capacity for um, being able to tackle things um, on mm -hmm. your own. Um, and so what they did was they basically took a look at um, two groups. So one group was a group that um, received this one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and so they basically combined together uh, and then looked at separately a group that either received no coaching over a certain period of time or a group that received coaching over a certain period of time. Um, and so basically what they were interested in looking at was whether or not there was a difference between the people that received the coaching or did not receive the coaching. Um, and the coaching was six sessions. So over a three month period of time, about every two weeks, the participants uh, took part in a one on one coaching session. And they were specific to say that hospitals and other types of jobs have done group interventions. And they were specifically interested in one on one. Now, like, I have some thoughts about um, what, how you might structure a group intervention to be more like. Um, a coaching session because they're really comparing a lot of the group interventions to like a training. Um, mm. But this was the first time that these doctors had received one-on-one. -on -one. And of course they picked physicians because they're a, a sample that would be more likely um, to be able to, uh, you know, they would capture higher levels of burnout and be able to look, um, look at that over time. So they had um, 26 people, um, in the uh, group that completed all of the um, all of the surveys, um, and they had 24 people uh, who completed the surveys from the control group. So uh, not huge samples, but uh, when you're talking about one-to-one -one coaching, like very expensive intervention, um, that's actually a fairly decent sample size. And because uh, you have you know one-on-one, -on -one, um, it's such an intensive intervention that you know, it's hard for people to, it's actually one of the larger sample sizes that they've been able to find in terms of the literature. So even though it's still fairly small, uh, in this literature, it's not that small. Okay, that makes sense. And I think, yeah, physicians make a lot of sense to at least guarantee that burnout is a possibility yes. in that, that occupation. Yes, exactly. So basically what happened was they received these coaching sessions every two weeks um, and the idea of the coaching session was that they worked with the coach to um, assess their strengths and set some goals in the first session. Um, and that first session was an hour long. And then the five sessions after were 30 minutes long. And they focused more on topics and tools that allowed the client to come up with an action plan to get towards the goal that they were trying to achieve in the first session. Um, and they did the first session face to face and then they did the rest remotely um, in order to accommodate their schedules. So something that's interesting is that this was mostly a virtual intervention. Um, hmm. So, yeah, you don't have to be in the same place, apparently. Um, yeah, it's very relevant right now, given. Yes. I mean, well. In May, <laughs> yes. um, you know, a lot of people are working virtually and I think that's going to be probably more common and probably stick around for a little while, uh, especially with, you know, not knowing how this disease is going to progress. So super interesting that this coaching is virtual and I think there's yeah. a lot of virtual coaches out there. So that's kind of good yeah. for, for all those people out there. Yeah, definitely. So, so I thought that was interesting. So they had them do uh, some various inventories uh inventories about like their character strengths and their values and how to use their strengths and then they had them do some exercises over the course of the sessions based on their needs things like mindfulness reflections uh reframing um reflections so like thinking about things differently uh gratitude reflections which we've talked about before and not every person experienced the same exact flow or um or like sequence of activities the idea was more that 
this was like crafted to their specific needs. So mm-hmm. while there's not standardization across what the uh, content of the sessions necessarily were, there was standardization in terms of how frequent they were and in what medium. And all of the coaches, uh, there were five coaches in the study, um, they all got together ahead of time and they agreed on the format that they would use, the philosophy that they would use, and the set of tools that they could use to facilitate their sessions. So they weren't choosing from a different selection. They all had the same selection of tools and then they would sort of vary which ones they utilized based on the client's needs. And they all kind of came together to determine like, how are we going to facilitate this to create some more standardization? But the idea of coaching is that it's tailored. So there wasn't really a way to be like, okay, we're going to do the same exact thing for everyone. Cause that kind of goes against the idea of what having a coach does. Right. Right. Yeah. The idea is that it's one-on-one. So it's not like, Oh, we're now going to do this mindfulness training where everyone learns mindfulness and the benefits of mindfulness. This is more about the benefits of having that tailored experience with someone trained to coach. Yeah. Exactly. And they also uh, had like the coaches decide like under these circumstances, these kinds of tools should be used under these circumstances, these kinds of tools should be used. So they did have some idea ahead of time um, through like conference calls they met to like go through, okay, if we came up with, if we have a scenario like this, how would we handle it? And then they would like keep going through those scenarios until they found that they were like congealing on their idea of what they would do. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, they tried to standardize it as much as possible. Um, but obviously a standard approach is not going to work because everyone's problems are going to be different. So what they did here was, uh, they measured, uh, both for the primary and the control group. Um, they measured the, uh, levels of various well-being related outcomes, both before the training, right after the training, three months after the training, and then six months after, well, not the training, sorry, the coaching. So, um, so it was before the coaching started right after the coaching was over, three months after they were done with the coaching and six months after they were done with the coaching. Okay. Um, and they measured burnout, work stress, turnover intentions, engagement, psychological capital, compassion, job self-efficacy, job satisfaction. And then they also collected from participants basically questions that were like, did the coach do these things, which would help them verify that they actually followed the practices that they were supposed to be following. Um, So they did have a check to make sure that like what they trained them on was actually like happening. They measured a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Yes, they measured a lot. And their overall, their goal was positive things should increase and negative things should decrease. But I'll tell you what the results basically showed. So the results showed that the only ones for which there was a positive increase over the coaching engagement that also held over time was for burnout, engagement, and psychological capital. So the main impacts that this had was on making people feel less burnout, um, which uh, I guess it would be useful to give like a little bit more. I know we're saying burnout, like everyone knows what it is, but um, basically the idea that you're uh, less emotionally exhausted, you're feeling less Uh, disconnected from your work in terms of like depersonalized. Like I just feel like I can't even identify with it. Um, And um, personal accomplishment. Like I'm just feeling like I I can't even think about achieving going after goals because I'm just like so out of energy. Um, So burnout was one. The other was engagement, which is things like, are you enthusiastic? Um, Do you feel like you're able to really immerse yourself in your work? And then psychological capital, which we've talked about before, which involves, do you have hope? Which is like, can I set goals and find pathways to them? Am I more resilient after failure? Uh, do I feel generally good about my ability to tackle tasks? And am I optimistic about the future? So those were the strongest things that related to the coaching intervention. Um, and the only ones that um, were both in- increased right after the coaching and held up over time. So the main takeaway from this article is that those three things really seem to be impacted by coaching interventions. I love that though. Those are three really good things to be impacted. So if you've decreased burnout, that means people even six months later are feeling better and less exhausted on their job. They are more engaged. So, I mean, in physicians, it's especially great, right? (laughs) You want your doctor to be engaged in the work. Um, So they're more likely to, you know, 
I don't know they didn't look at performance, but that would lead generally to potentially doing better on the job or at least caring more about doing the job well. Mm -hmm. Um, And then having that increase in psychological capital. So I'll make sure we have to make sure we link to the episode on that. But um, psychological capital has just so many benefits. And if you're able to be resilient and optimistic and you feel like you can um, set goals and tackle those goals. Like all those things are really good for your overall outcome. So it seems like it's building resources. Coaching is building resources for the person to be able to tackle whatever's coming their way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so those are all really good things, especially for like goal attainment and goal achievement, which was the purpose of the coaching. One of the things that they mentioned, because they were kind of surprised that they didn't find uh, similar outcomes for job related things. Like, um, as I mentioned, they measured job satisfaction, job self-efficacy, turnover intentions, work stress. Um, and they were really thinking that they would find those things, um, you know, being affected. But one thing that they mentioned was that because the study was providing the coach and not the workplace providing the coach, that could have some impact. Like if you felt like, wow, my job's like giving me this great resource and they're helping me to get to my goals that might be a more direct way to promote uh, better attitudes about the job. Um, So one thing that they thought was like, it could be different if the company offered this resource as opposed to just like randomly. Um, The other thing that they thought was that it's possible that because coaching is not focused on like mentoring might be more focused on like, let me give you advice about how to actually talk to your manager about whatever, or let me give you advice about this. People might feel more like, oh, I got this advice and now I, because we know from the mentoring literature, those job things are impacted. So um, it may be like more direct intervention, like, oh, I have this stressful thing that's going on at work. Let me give you advice about how to get rid of that stressful thing. And the person then feels like, oh, okay, I have like an immediate solution to getting rid of or extinguishing the thing in my current job. Whereas coaching is less about like, how do you change the circumstances of your current role and more about like, how do you achieve the life that you want in the future? So it may be that it just gives you a better efficacy to approach better hope and resilience and things to approach um, things that you want to do moving forward, but not necessarily that it helps you address things that are currently bothering you about your role. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, for me, as you're talking about it, I think of coaching like coaching is about my career goals more broadly than mentoring like you were saying and mentoring I think can get you towards like okay how do you get to that next level that next promotion and those types of things but I think coaching is bigger than that so it makes sense like it doesn't surprise me I guess that Mm -hmm. it may not be related to some of those things because thinking about um like if I need to be coached on certain part of my career certain things goals that I have in my life and this job isn't the right fit it might not impact my turnover intentions in the right way. Like I might actually, right. like some people, it might make them want to stay because they see a path at their current role. And other people, they might want to leave or more likely want to leave than they used to because now they see, okay, well, if I want this future, this is not the place for that. So what are the things I can do to slowly grow to get to that place where I can move to the next step that might be outside of this organization? So I think that there's probably enough variability as to whether or not the coaching leads to wanting to build within that company or hospital or wanting Mm -hmm. to build elsewhere that it would kind of wash each other out because I think it doesn't matter as much right exactly I think that's right um and I think also you know one of the things that they mentioned in the article was that you know this is this is something that's meant to really help guide people to their own solutions. So it makes sense that you would feel more, more of it would be around your own personal well being. Like, wow, like I feel so much better equipped to solve my own problems or to tackle challenges. And like, I'm energized by the idea that I just feel better about my life as opposed to like, I'm, you're not going to sit in a coaching meeting and say like, I'm experiencing this like stress for my boss. Like, You could, but the question would be, okay, what do you need to do to get yourself out of that situation? Like what, so it's more like this like future focused, um, thinking about like, okay, how can we think around this as opposed to like, well, here's what I did when I was in that situation and it worked for me kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that's probably a big piece of it. 
I mean, honestly, everything you've said about this study, it all seems to make a lot of sense. Like coaching, yeah. being focused, less on the specific job, less on the specific task, less on, you know, right here, right now. Um, makes sense that, ne- that some of those job things are not as related. But then at the same time, it makes a lot of sense that it builds your resources. So you're less likely to be burnt out. You are able to be engaged in the work itself. And that's not necessarily related to the company or whatever you're in. And then that psychological capital, I mean, it makes a lot of sense that coaching can help develop that resiliency and that optimism for the future. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if you are interested in getting a coach or if you're interested in offering coaching, um, as a company, you would see the return on that through burnout for sure. Um, So it makes sense that if, especially if you employ a lot of people who have jobs where burnout is particularly likely, like this sample had physicians in it. Any kind of caring, compassion work is always more likely or more subject to burnout than other jobs. So it might be a good investment to offer some coaching to employees that have been experiencing, you know, particularly high levels of burnout because their productivity will be a lot better um, if you offer them this training. So it's not that like, you know, it and their engagement will be better. So those are things that I think an employer would care about. And from a personal standpoint, if you're thinking of getting a coach, While you may not be able to experience like lowered stress or you might not like your actual job better, you might not be able to change your current circumstances of the role that you're in, you'll be able to change your feelings of being able to do something about that situation moving forward. So, you know, you're building like personal capacity to be able to address how you want your life to unfold. Um, And I think that that's pretty important in terms of being able to like look at things holistically. Mm hmm. And I think um, one thing as you were talking, I was thinking about is like, because it's not related to the job related stuff, like companies shouldn't be afraid of providing coaching because like you said, you'll see burnout impacts, which is going to really help the company. But mm-hmm. also like, I'm just thinking holistically from a culture perspective, like obviously you and I talk a lot about how building the right culture, building um, an organization where people can thrive and being able to help balance work and life and people's wellness and all those things um, at in your workplace, coaching can help you with that. And coaching mm-hmm. can create an environment that's really positive. And yeah, maybe that means somebody's going to have to leave at some point. But like, wouldn't you want that person giving them the best and their all the in- while they're there? And then when they leave, like, great, like people don't stay at companies forever. It's fine they're leaving and hopefully they'll have success and then that person had a really positive impact which can be you know maybe somebody's looking at them and then aspiring to move up in your organization to be more like them or whatever like I think that there's a lot of benefits that not all turnover is necessarily like the end of the world I think very quick turnover because of a bad culture is is really bad but if you have people that are staying around and they're getting coached and they're getting these resources from you that's really positive during that time period and it's okay if they leave for a career move not everyone has to stay their entire career within your organization and those resources that you're giving are going to encourage new employees new great talented people that want to come because they know you're giving these resources yeah totally yeah and I think that you know especially with regard to thinking about you know how do you put good brand faith out into the community and also like that you actually recognize like I think one of the biggest things especially when you're in jobs that are high burnout is like people feel like their employer doesn't care like they they just don't, aren't cognizant of it or they want to look the other way so mm-hmm. demonstrating that you really do care um and that you're interested in investing in the future of employees like you said goes a long way um and you know word of mouth positive recommendations like it doesn't just stop here. Like, again, this was a very um, preliminary study in a smallish sample, even though it's bigger than um, some other samples of these types of studies have been. Um, but, you know, it's not it's not the open and closed book on it. So there could be a lot of other outcomes that are associated with um, with this that, you know, have yet to be explored. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, this is just showing that there's positive um, results. So hopefully there's even more positive results. We just don't know about it yet. And as research continues, we'll be able to see that further. Um, but I, I loved your takeaways, you know, from employers to consider doing this and then for people that, you know, want to, to 
reduce burnout for themselves or, you know, really want to help themselves get resiliency and some of those resources to build their careers. I mean, considering getting a coach is a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. I think that more companies should think about providing coaching if they can, and people should think about getting a coach if that's something that interests them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Katina. I really liked it. It's a good good article. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for listening to it. Yes, and we'd love to hear from all of our listeners um, out in August <laughs> when this airs. Uh, so please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your stories. Has coaching worked for you? Um, do you want to get a coach? Are you interested now? We'd love to hear everything from you. So please reach out. You can email us at contact at workerbeing.com. You can find us on social at workerbeing, which is on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can also find us on our website, workerbeing.com. Thanks for listening. The Worker Being Podcast is hosted by us, Patricia Grabarek and Katina Sawyer, and produced by Allie Johnson. Oh.